vicious calls. Let's find out who is going to be playing from behind. Who's going to have a low chance of making it through a tool as we hop in to our first best of three of the last chance qualifiers. Vingester is going to be rocking the Abbasid Dynasty on the right side in red. Left side is going to be Avalay with the Delhi in blue. We've talked about this numerous times, KP. This is a Civ matchup that often happens, especially on Lipany. This time around, we're going to have it on Dry Arabia. And this, at least on paper, is an Abbasid favored civilization matchup. So you would think Winchester has the upper hand in this one. So for Avalay, this is a challenging matchup, but by far not impossible to win. But hear me out. Winchester is nerfed. He he isn't playing as pink. So do we decrease his chance of winning? Um, or you can decrease his chance of winning it? by three point seven percent for that. Three point seven. Okay, three point seven. All right. Well, we'll have to see if that's good enough to give Avli the edge. Now, Dry Arabia used to be kind of a classico choice. The Delhi did seem quite strong, but nobody. A lot of players have been struggling to find a way to make this Civ feel as dominant as it once was. One cool change I have seen players engaging with is the idea of the Tower of Victory, and I'm curious to see if Avli is going to move towards that this game. Interesting point that you bring up indeed. Could easily try to exploit the Abbasid greed, because yep. one of the things and one of the reasons why Abbasids are so powerful nowadays is because it's very difficult to punish greed. But a Tower of Victory puts things into a complete different narrative, especially when your hunt is so exposed like this. That's your number one go-to spot when you are dropping your second TCS Winchester, but it's also a very much exposed spot, so it could easily open up an opportunity for Avalid to threaten. Yeah, I think one kind of cool element to the Tower Victory is that because you're making your units 20% more efficient, uh, you get more surplus eco you can work with to put into your own TCs, which I think is another important element for the Delhi at the moment. Like, I... The, the people that I've seen having the most success actually with Delhi at the moment, I'd say it's probably Puppy Paul and Wham, and both of those guys regularly go for the 2TC build. Haven't quite subscribed to the Tower of Victory consistently yet, but I think it's just a matter of time. And if you think about that, that's probably the right way to go, because the concern you have with the Delhi, especially in a civilization matchup like this, is that if you go for a 1TC build, you're so much reliant on those sacred sites to offset your eco deficit that if at any moment in the game your opponent can decap those, or dare I say, might even just delay you from capturing them, their eco advantage is going to be so big to overcome, and by minute 18, 19, you will just have no chance to have the numbers put on the field. But looks like Avalay is going to go with the oh. conventional Dome of Faith approach, so we're going to have to see how he's going to leverage the extra scholars he's getting here from those. He's going to have to rely on Faith to get him through this then. I, I don't believe in any more lytical. I... I look in disgust at the Dome of Faith build, so at least he can redeem himself. Maybe we still see a secondary TC. Otherwise, maybe he's just going to go for so some sort of mid-map aggression and now micro. I mean, if he plays for quick Sacred Site control, it could catch Vinchester off guard. You know, Vinny doesn't have as many hours, and I actually feel like Delhi is not really being picked a lot at the highest levels on the ladder, so it might be that Vinchester isn't as familiar with this matchup. That could be a possibility, for sure. I, I just feel like because we had Lipany so frequently played in the previous weeklies, if Winchester did watch some of those games, he should at least have a good idea of how this matchup plays out, because on Lipany, this was a more than common matchup. So I think Winchester should have at least a decent clue of what he needs to do to make life very difficult for Delhi over here. He's going to spot the Dome of Fate, so he knows that this is going to be a slower-paced approach here from Avalay. And this actually raises an interesting question whether Winchester is going to contemplate dropping his extra TC on one of those sacred sites like we have seen some other players do. Mm. I, I mean, the, the, the problem with the idea of dropping uh, on the, the sacred site is like when you're in this matchup, I don't think the Delhi player worries about it because you don't get value on the board, right? Usually on Dry Arabia, people will drop a TC towards sacred site because there's a board there, um, which in this game, especially on that south side, there's a perfect placement, but it, I just don't see it happening. It's also so far to move away for Vinny, so I expect him to play condensed and... Wouldn't mind seeing him just go into Mass Horseman as you usually do the Abbasids, just to try and dictate map control. Yeah, that's definitely something you want to go for, because you still don't want to forfeit all three of those sacred sites to the Della player easily. Because keep in mind, if you have no army on the field for Winchester, Avalis is just going to walk out, capture the three sacred sites, vote them in, and it puts you in a 10-minute timer, which seems like it's a lot of time, but when you're trying to focus on your eco, having that countdown go on and on, is actually something that puts a lot of pressure on you. So this is something Winchester has to be careful with. At the bare minimum, he needs to field a couple of units to slow down his opponent capping those sacred sites. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, to your point around like how quickly that time goes, that time goes so quickly, especially early on in the game, when if you don't have a military force already, you now have to build it. If there's one big problem right now in, in AOE4 that, that I've noticed a few players uh, agree on, it's that in the early game, um, TCing feels very easy, but anything militarily focused feels a little bit more difficult. So while you get these TCs for free, the transition that comes afterwards takes a lot of setup time. And although the Ambassadors can be strong around the 20 minute mark, let's say Avali takes map control at 10, he might be able to close out the game before Winchester comes online. Yeah, the key word is a 20 minute mark indeed. If you take a look at the statistics, usually you see that it is about 17, 18 minutes game time by which Abbasids are able to translate the massive eco that they build up using two or three TCs into actual army. Right now we're sitting at the six minute mark. If Avali is able to capture those sacred sites in the next two or three minutes, which is a possibility if Winchester is not contesting them, then you can see that he would be down to like two or possibly even one minute on the countdown by the time Winchester's abbasids really come online. Now, Winchester has to be feeling very comfortable what he just scoured. Not only is he going to get the double deer stack, which is juicy, but he just got an eyeball on Avali's base. He saw the double blacksmith's play and sees zero military influence coming out from Avali. A very slow opener for Adeli. It looks like he's trying to fix that now. He's dropping the stables. Likely that Vinchester is going to scout that as he wraps around. And I hope he does for his sake. Otherwise, this could easily catch him off guard. Yeah, he needs to be cautious about this one. He only has one scout to work with, but he might actually catch a glance mm -hmm. of those production he buildings both. he does. Yeah, he sees everything. So rack stables. Now, I don't know about you, Lily Cool, but if, if I'm an ambassador player and I see rack stables, I, I've got to be feeling pretty good, right? Like, this is the matchup you want to have to face the Abbasids. Indeed, you can just match their numbers. In fact, you probably will be able to field better numbers than they do. And keep in mind that the Abbasid Spearmen are way more valuable once they get Phalanx than the Daily are. So this is more than happy for Winchester to be in, simply because, as you said, you can do the exact same thing as the Daily player is doing, just better. Yeah, I mean, with the surplus, like you could argue you just go uh, Horsemen Archers as the Abbasid player, right? Because you can mass just as many Horsemen and the reason why Archers is good, because the, the one edge Delhi could have in this, this kind of clash in melee is the healing. So if that's Avali's plan, if you do just go only melee as Winchester, you possibly play into an advantageous fight for the Delhi. Look at Avali now going for all three sacred sites. He's not expecting much army to be on the field from Winchester. He's mostly right. Only two horsemen right now for Vinch. Could easily yield three sacred sites here in a matter of seconds for Avali. And that could be a concern for Vinch because we're talking about the tremendous amount of resources that could be converted into army in a second. A little bit of a raid in is going to force a garrison, which is going to idle a little bit of eco here. That'll slow down the escalation into horsemen from Vinchester. And it's just going to be the spear horsemen open the bass at the moment. I think the idea for Vinny is around 14 15 minutes to add in one or two camel archers, at which point he can relegate the damage of half of Avali's army. Yeah, that's a big point, right? That's part of the other reasons why Abbasids are more than happy fighting these in Feudal. Ooh. Speaking of fighting in Feudal, one heal. scholar might actually heal. get picked off. Heal! Uh. We've heard hold, but this is not hold, this is heal. However, when you're running away, it becomes more difficult to do that. Like oh, he survives! Over to assist. Yeah, he stays alive. The spearmen are going to push you away, Vinchester. He knows he's behind on the horsemen, so he can't afford to sacrifice any this sniper scholar. Yeah, I think he could have tried it to pick it off with the other horsemen. Wanted to play this cautious, but he needs to be careful here. For now, he decapped one of the sacred sites, but we already have two under the control of Avali, and he's going to start walling those in. And that's where things get concerning for Vinch, because that allows Avali to focus to one specific location on the field, or possibly be the one dictating where the fights take place even. Navali's done a phenomenal job of sucking Vinchester into the cyclone that is war right now. You can see Vinny, he hasn't gone for the third TC play. He's stuck on two and just spamming as many horsemen and spears as possible. The difference, however, is any fight that he loses begins to snowball in favor of Avali because he can heal off any damage his units take and in the end end up with a much superior number in terms of military pop cap. Ooh, a little raid coming in here for Winch. This is actually pretty Tomorrow. juicy here. Oh no, the pathfinding. Vinchester, if his horseman went north side there, he would have body blocked out the villagers. Might have even been able to snipe one or two in time, but flash in the center. And because the scholar is here, it means that Vinchester, even though it's mass horsemen versus spears, it's not a fight he wants to take. 
Yeah, back at the base of Avali, he's actually pretty successful picking off a couple of villagers. Bit of a slow reaction here by Avali. What? Wait, this, this, that's... Oh, uh, no, uh -oh. Avali. That, that's a sin. That's no textiles. On an Heraldic that, point like, mispositioned. Look at the spearmen just chilling on the left side, completely ignoring the horsemen that are just butchering the villagers. I mean, the crazy part is they should have maybe got one max if they had just been textiles. It is surprising to me when Avali, you'd think the moment he saw horsemen coming out, that's usually the time where you go, I need textiles. But apparently Avali needed a punt in the nuts to remind him of that very important res uh, resource. In fact, I don't think he's got it still. I think he still hasn't queued textiles yet. No, not at all. Oof. Oh, that's painful. And the problem is that he has had the sacred sites to offset the eco deficit, but now it's insufficient because he's down by 16 eco. And look at what Winchester is doing. He has no desire to play the South in Feudal. Instead, wants to go to Castle Age. He's going to have a tremendous advantage reaching Castle Age even. Uh, uh, I, I, I'd say he optimized well, right? Like, he didn't lose many troops while going for yeah. this either, which is surprising when you consider how many assaults Winchester attempted. Yeah, Winchester has just enough to hold this off. You see, army numbers are actually double for Avali, but it's not really showing on the battlefield because Avali got distracted so much by those raids, and obviously the extra efficiency that you also have here for the Abbasid Spearman will help upset those uh, numbers disadvantages. But still, Winchester needs to possibly hold off an assault here because at the very late as to when he reaches Castle Age, that's the go sign for Avali. And yeah. Avali, he wants to play full feudal here, up to 14 horsemen, 19 spearmen even. But the bigger number probably is the scholar count, up to eight now. That's a tremendous amount of healing that you have for that army. He's got four more queued up, so they'll be coming out in slew soon. And also, with two sacred sites capped, you can actually afford to just build a mosque and push scholars quicker. Remember, uh, they only take 45 seconds to produce if you take them out of the Dome of Faith, the discounted versions. Normal mosque production is every 30 seconds. It allows you to go to the healing ball mass that you need very quickly in this game. And Right now, Avali's feeling a need for speed. I don't know if he sees the House of Wisdom upgrading just yet, but he doesn't want to wait around for the bad news. He's going to march in. Spears will clash against each other. Horsemen will be able to break through, and it looks like the defense force is somewhat crippled because I believe Winchester was trying to make a move to the north side with the horses. Yeah, he's detaching the horsemen for the time being. On the other hand, Evel is also lacking numbers over here. He doesn't have most of his scholars on the battlefield. Archers are just now appearing on battlefield as well. At least he denied the berries. And I think he may have even spotted the Castle Age coming in on the House of Wisdom. But this could be dangerous for Vinch, actually. This flank, this will be negated by the Horseman of Avalay, while also having the chance to push into the base of Vinch. And this is the go-to side for Avalay. Now is the time to strike. Oh, Vinny, all the way out the back side on the berries. That game going for the moment, but I'm worried that might get spotted quickly. And yeah, there's already eyeballs on it. Feels like he's run out of places that you can gather. In fact, if he gets shut out on this extension TC, that's all of his future food eco kind of gone. There's nowhere else safe on the map for him, so he has to hold in this area. But right now, Pinch coming in, Archer's arriving as well. Bad fight for Vinchester to be taken, but he has no choice. Tech up at least complete, so men at arms are going to hit the field soon. But in the meantime, Avali gets the opportunity to continue to turn the screws. Oh, I love this move from Vinch. He is just delaying those horsemen from reappearing on the battlefield while also slowing down this push on the extra TC. As you said, he needs time to get a couple of men at arms on the field, but he may still Whoa. not be able to save the TC, actually. He definitely can't, Lidical. He didn't daisy chain it in. It's not got the fire armor. They could just torch it down right now. He's going to force a fight out of Winchester. Upgrades are going to come through, but archers do still counter out even these veteran spearmen. He'll be able to hold long enough, and if he just turns around and torches his TC down, it's going to be gone. Skulls are being sniped in the meantime but we'll be able to keep him alive. And I mean, this is a critical lesson for Vinchester. It's an easy detail to look over if you haven't played the Abbasas enough. Not connecting your buildings in, not actually daisy chaining to the House of Wisdom means that they don't have extra resistance against these early torches. And there goes the entire eco advantage that Vinchester has had. Numerous villagers will fall over here as he's desperately trying to save the TC. TC gone, villagers will fall. And a bigger concern, still only five men at arms on the field insufficient to stop such a massive force with it sounds like i'm nitpicking when i talk about this this fire armor but i'm not lyrical like if he had that chained in if he had that influence that extra keep in mind like the torch damage out spearman is about 13 right so you're taking away like half the damage if that's there that tc lasts long enough that vinchester doesn't panic dive in the fight he waits until double digit men at arms and then he can clean up this battle but instead 
Now he's at risk of being completely overran. Look at his account. He's up to eight military pop cap. Avali is up at 67 and shows no signs of slowing down. Now look at that. Dead bodies of villagers littering the battlefield out there. The berries have been denied. The gold has been denied. And Winchester, he can't even afford those premium units here in Castle Age because he's being cut off from gold. He has four knights on the field, eight men at arms to support them with, but that is by far not sufficient to deal with an army of above 60 units on the field for Avalon. All Avalon is missing is one or two rams. I hope he has got Siege Engineering already researched via his double blacksmiths because that would be a deal breaker in favor of him. Winchester wouldn't be able to hold on long enough, but rams are going to be key here because remember, once again, that torch damage I talked about, that damage reduction is there for all these buildings on the screen right now. So you can't take out the military reduction of those stands. Yeah, decent engagement over here for Vinch, but Spearman still coming in here for Avalay. And those knights, they won't be a factor for at least a couple more seconds with the Spearman Wait. being nearby. Where are all the scholars at? Like, I feel like there's barely yeah. any hit. Uh, he's, he's, Avalay's actually slowly losing this battle. Like, it, it looks good for him because you look at the raw numbers, but that men at arms count is creeping up. It's now up to 10. There's five lances as well. And... Now a bigger risk starts to come into the picture. Heavy cavalry can cut off any reinforcements as they daisy chain across the field. Uh, this is an interesting battle here for uh, Avalay. As you said, he's slowly losing this battle over here, partly because he detached some of his forces to raid, but what's the price that Winchester had to pay for this? Look at his eco. It's a train wreck. 41 villagers only, just now trying to add the second town center to recuperate the losses. His food eco completely devastated with minimal chance to replenish those lost units. And once again, oh. Oh. look north, look north, ignore this. This is a distraction. Vinchester oh, striking big. back. Avali's checking up, but this is something I was looking for. One thing we have to remember is Avali, because he has mid map aggression, he's going to go for pocket ecos. And there's been Lancers looking for targets now. So if this is the beginning of Vinchester's raids and Avali can't shut them down, this could once again be Vinny in the lead on the economy. Well, the question is, can Winchester do enough damage before Avali reaches Castle Age over here? Look at that. DC might even get denied, oh boy. Oh no. Backs away. At least he got the other one to the northeast side. And he's building another one north further from here. So he realizes he can't come over this area. Makes sense, actually. I love this from Avali. He's prioritizing food sources. Double deer stack and berries in this area means he wants to park himself here eternally. Yeah, he's doing such a good job denying those DCs. Winchester struggling to catch up in the villager department. And those Lancers, they did some damage here. In fact, they did way more damage than they were supposed to be able to do. Oh, yeah. But still, Avalon is going to reach Castle Age. He has three sacred sites. And this is where that countdown starts becoming atrocious. We're down to six minutes and Winchester is nowhere close to being able to neutralize either of those sacred sites. But he's able to neutralize more villagers. Raid in once again. And... I can't tell if that was textiles or not. It looks like it may have been. So maybe he negates one or two additional losses. That's going to be important as you start. No, what? Okay. No. Nope. It's a miracle that two villagers got out of that because they should all be dead right now. Indeed, they should. This is the number one thing you want to do when there is any chance of being graded as a deli. It takes 20 seconds or so to get textiles for yourself. That's exactly one villager production time. So if you are about to lose possibly more than one villager, then it's worth getting. And it's not something that Avalay has done. He's going to be able to compensate for villager losses oh. with relics, though. What? Where? Lidicor? Where? Where's the wall? Where's um, the wall? I don't care about question mark, Mr. Question mark. Chivalrous Knight on the go here. I care about that sacred site. Oh, that's Avalay such a freebie. just gave a free decap. I... Wait. Uh, Why? That's I mean, such a freebie. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, Lancers are the redeeming factor. Avalie gets away with it in the end. But maybe he shouldn't have there. Winchester is still moving on the south side, though. And Avalie sees a cheeky opportunity to be a cheeky git. Mm -hmm. Hold him hostage, boys. Not oh. oh, no. He did. Oh, Avalie. He's not looking. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, yeah. Avalie. He's doing the right things, but every once in a while, there is a kind of a misstep. That's just making his life much, much more difficult. He gets away with that wall missing on the northern side. Now he's also going to have a forward keep, but he might actually end up losing this southernmost sacred site. Might actually be able to yoink the relic, though, because Vinch is not looking. Hey, maybe use it? Oh, too late. He walked into him. I mean, it, it probably is still a death, but if he'd done it straight away on the pickup, maybe. Maybe yeah. he get the men at arms.
Lance is yeah. after proving annoying though, and Avalie is still getting most of the relics. And Truth is that Sacred Side Victory Condition, but that keep you mentioned is critical here. He went for Compound of Defenders. He had two choices. Either split your keeps up onto each of these, or begin a keep dive. And we can see what his intent is. Almost enough stone now gathered for an additional two keeps. He wants to park himself inside Vinny's base. And Vinny, he comes from a game that features doubt, so you should know all about these castles. Oh, what is he doing? He might let the Sacred Side be decapped. Oh, that's so oh. painful. Could have been just pathfinding, Time. but still. Yeah, he, he, he neutralizes it anyway, so he still gets rid of that, that win condition. And I believe maybe a little bit too reserved with a secondary keep. He probably could yeah. have got away with a few tiles more away, but he wants to play it safe. Yeah, he's playing it more than safe over here. Do keep in mind that the House of Wisdom is the only other landmark outside this and the starting town center to take down. So he doesn't need to spread all his keeps out here to potentially threaten the expansion to the right side. All he needs to do is just creep up on the House of Learning, or House of Wisdom rather, and the starting TC. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's actually setting up the trap to take down the expansion TC to the north first, but he has enough stone for almost two additional castles. So he might have just been reserved because he can still drop more keeps. He's not going to slow down anytime soon. He's like, I think there's enough stone on Dry Arabia to surround his entire base for keeps. But for now, he's going to make a wrap around with the cavalry. Shuts down all the eco on the wood line for Vinchester. That's important because if we think about what Vinchester now needs, it's farms. He doesn't have access to food for much longer, so he needs to transition. And that's why Avalie is now diving towards the wood lines, the only wood lines that Vinchester has. I mean, you're telling he needs farms. I feel like he needs a miracle because right now, He's down to 15 army against 50, and there's a keep being placed right next to his starting town center with a chance for Evoli to drop another keep. Trev's already setting up to take down the production buildings, and Winchester's mad arms not even jumping on the villagers here. They will try to torch down this castle, but that's just not gonna happen. This is looking impossible for Vinch right now, KP. It is looking pretty rough. And you say you need a miracle. Maybe if he sings the song by Cascade loud enough, a miracle will occur. I don't know if that's how it actually works in real life, but. <laughs> Well, he would definitely need some siege. He needs to get a trebuchet or two. He's trying to build them up, but it's too little too late. He knows it. The siege coming in. The keep drops as well. Avali on point. Takes the first game. Execution mwah, with the Delhi. Well, Vinchester back to the drawing board. And actually, in game number two, he's going to be going towards Avali's own creation on Basin. Big win over here for Avali. We talked about this one. Delhi doesn't really like to play against the Abbasids, but Vinchester went for a risky approach, that is the early castle age. Usually the big book of the Abbasids say that you want to play a defensive game and just wait for a, your opponent to dive your base, and then you can go to castle once they lost their army. Instead, he went for a castle age with minimal army on the field, and that got punished really well by Avalie. Avalie was much more delayed to castle, but by the time he got there, he had complete map control, he had the sacred sites for most of the game, was able to secure the relics, and from that point on, it was just a deli keep, keep keep creep. And with that, he secures game number one. A critical game number one in the best of three puts him into match point. Mm -hmm. All right, Vinchester losing with what I We can discuss that more. I think I hear something beckoning us into the game. It's time to see if Avali is the god champ of the map he created, or if his only child is going to stab him in the back and get Vinchester back in this game. Let's go, game number two. How crazy it is that Vinchester decided to go with the creation of his opponent as his home map. Indeed, we were on Basin, <laughs> a map that was created by Avali. Vinchester chose this as his home map, and Vinchester is going to be rocking the English in red. Evilly in command of the Abbasids in blue. Oh my god. You know what? I, I was mentioning it just before we got in the game. I didn't want to keep us in the game because I think it's an interesting discussion. I was pointing out that usually the wood lines on um, Basin, one of them tends to be behind the base and it makes it harder for a longbow rush to, to work because you can't shut them down. This might be the way it works. If if Vinchester wants to go for it, that's a double forward wood spawn. He could easily park himself between the two tree lines and then you're the Abbasis playing without wood, which if there's one resource you can't play without, honestly, more so than food even, it's wood for the Abbasis. Because with food, your villages are dirt cheap anyway. It's wood that you need in abundancy. The other thing is that there are a lot of sources where you can possibly get backup food from. Worst case scenario, if the game escalates slowly, you can possibly squeeze in a couple of farms, or you can sneak out a couple of villagers to the hunt, or to the berries to the south, for example, which may not go noticed by winch. But on this map, you really don't have a ton of wood to work with. 
two major forests for both players. Outside of that, just Stealth Forest and a tiny bit uh, of wood down to the south of the place for Evelay. So, if the aggression comes in from Winchester from the south, indeed, as you said, he could easily cut his opponent off from most of the accessible wood. And that could make life very difficult for Evelay, especially if you consider that, strictly speaking, quite a lot of the food accessible for Evelay is also exposed, with one of the deer patches being on the front and two of those berry patches to the south also being very close to those wood lines that we talked about. Yeah, and that's the key thing around the wood lines, right? You get too safe, and as you mentioned, you play out in the midfield, there's Stealth Forest, and then there's what just looks like a 10-year-old trying to grow a beard. There's always a little patchwork everywhere, right? So you just <laughs> hop from tree line to tree line quickly. It's very difficult to remain protected because the cool thing about these starting wood lines is they're thick, they're luscious, they're big, right? I can hide behind them. It takes you a long time to go around them. Compare them to these baby stacks. I can quickly flank attack you anywhere. So if this game goes long, I'm expecting wolves to go up. And we've seen that actually, even with Basin being so open, it's not uncommon to see someone stonewalling up on each side. Someone that we actually saw in the finals last weekend. Yeah, because in a way, as much as this map is open, this to a certain extent encourages players to play somewhat greedy. The map is so open in the middle that many players feel intimidated to try and mass army and go through the middle because they are just afraid of possibly being caught off guard in the middle of the field, getting outnumbered and losing their entire army. So, in a way, the safer approach is to play greedy, and oftentimes that also includes playing very defensive with a ton of walls as well. Well, the logic is that if you, if you don't secure additional resources, you're on the clock, right? Like, you're extremely on the clock with this kind of uh, map generation, the way this map works. And TCs are just free, secure this areas in the early mid game. Like it's very difficult to take out a TC. And I mean, honestly, right now the meta is entirely TCs. I've, I've discussed this with players. Like it's, it makes no sense to not build TCs compared to what else you can do for the same investment. Like TCs are just a better justification. They give you some element of map control in a new area. They increase your income in terms of resources down the line via villager production. And they allow you to extend to a new area long-term. So. It's just TC meta right now is kind of goaded. And on a map like this, it's absolutely required. Uh, what do we have here? We're just looking at Scout being idle for the brief moment. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just flaming <laughs> Finchester. Oh, God. What, what's that AV2 legend? Oh, I saw you. Mic I didn't know micro on that Scout for four seconds. What's this, Lydical? I thought AV2 was a high micro game. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, I, got, I got scared. I'm not going to lie. I was looking there. Okay. Do we have a freeze? Do we have a crash? Or are we just looking at a scout being idle? Luckily, it was just a scout being idle. And looks like Winchester, he has no desire to go aggressive over here. He's working his way towards stone just as much as Avalay does. So, Vinch, he's gonna play two TCs, likely into a fast castle, and then work his way up from there. Or he has quite a lot of farms set up over here, so his food eco is gonna be pretty decent here at the beginning of the game. I hope he's going to drop that TC on the deer, though. I, I really do pray that this isn't going to just be an amassment of farms, because he already started, right? He's already got a few down. I, it, it it hurts me. I, it kind of hurts me right now. Like, I, I get the temptation from the English. It's so cheap. But I think something that gets slept on is the idea that compared to deer, like, the, the gathering rates on these farms don't make it worth it until this castle anyway. And then also, sure, it's half price for farms, the English, which is what makes it so desirable. But remind me again how much bonus would you get as the English Lydical? None. Oh. Oh, so I, I still have to, like, slow harvest 37 wood per farm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I agree with you. The thing is that you have to nail timings over here. Just having one minute advantage into Castle Age gives you a couple of extra knights over the opponent. Could possibly be the difference maker between securing three or four relics as compared to securing just one or two. So, as you said, it's about the fact that you have a better getter rate at the beginning, so you really want to leverage that so you can nail a slightly better cost leash timing. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong, the, the gathering rate will be better per villager than D in age two, yes. But what I'm pointing out is, like, what is your gathering rate on wood? What is that investment per villager versus on deer? Deer that you can have eight people gathering from each individual deer 2k plus food in each of these pockets of deer it, it lasts you a long time the logic is that if you get to castle age and then you transition to farms you're just better off for it and i think also the english get a lot more options on the table once they reach castle age anyway it's also worth noting that recently there was a buff for survival techniques and given the fact that winchester yes. already has a mill going because of the farms 
it could make a lot of sense for him to stay on gold with a couple of villagers and squeeze in survival techniques just to get even more leverage or even more boost to his eco from those deer. It's so cheap as well. It's so insane with cheap. Yep. I mean, the, the, the only thing that might deter him, I think survival techniques gets really tasty when there's two sources nearby, right? So either a second deer stack or a ball. Sadly, from that perspective, it would be a bad game for it because he only has the single deer. Like the, the next deer is far north and then the boar is far south. Oh God, Bin, uh, whoop, Binny boy. Whoop. Uh, it, it's fine. They've recovered. Are you playing but... on panoramic for you today or? I, I honestly don't know. Um, we might not actually. Oh, I love that detail actually from Winchester. If you look back at the deer, he spread out all his villages two to each deer. So he's optimizing travel distance to the, the, the mill. That's actually a small cool detail. There's a little something for people to take note of. Yeah, it, it makes the villagers less bumpy, especially when yeah. pathfinding is sometimes wacky. It's going to optimize things as well. Also, this way, he's not depleting the ones that are at the back of the mill that fast, and the ones that are exposed are also being taken. So if there's any kind of small aggression coming from Avalay, his villagers are also taking the ones that are exposed. So even if he gets cut off from those, it's not a complete waste. Uh, is a mirrored deer play out of Avalee. He did extend on to the, his own deer. Difference for him, though, is I feel like he's closer to his secondary backup deer layout. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a third TC or rather fourth TC up there because the time being, it's going to be third TC to the south side to secure the first berry patch and then the second one to the east. Oh, that's a little horseman out there trying to be funny. You Ambitious. have to remember your... Yeah, you have to remember you're up against English villagers. He might actually be able to yoink one villager because one of them is weak, but... That feels like a long shot, and really, this is just, you know, standard courtesies play to each other. Like, hey, I'm here. Don't forget that you're not playing against an easy AI. You're actually playing against a high-level player. Yeah, but, I mean, okay, I've got to get a controversial discussion going. Can we just click on that horseman and hover on his stats, please? I think it's very important that we do this. Um, because something that has really been grinding my gears, Lytical. Horsemen, what do they get done? What do they get bonus damage against? They're getting it against light infantry, KP. They get bonus damage against ranged units. It specifies... Were those villagers not range lytical? <laughs> English uh, players are in shambles wanna, right you, now. Like, no, God, please. You don't want to break the game, KP. You definitely don't want to break the game like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm English and I'm just over here trying to get my boys nerfed. Come on, guys. When they are using those bows, they are ranged units, okay? If I can get bonus damage of the horseman against a camel archer, I should be able to damn well get it against a villager with a bow. Okay, but in that case, you gotta give some damage boost to the archers against the villagers of other civs because, well, those are technically lightly armored melee units we're talking about. That's true. Like, Lytical, it's a long day. I'm only getting started, right? Like, I've checked out the Malians. You know, they've got their, uh, their better scouts. Here's one interesting one for you. As it stands, when you wallalol as the English and convert villages, they learn how to use a bow. So if I wallalol enemy scouts as a Malian, should I not also get upgraded scouts? I'm just gonna leave, I'm gonna leave it there for the full process because we've got plenty to focus on here. <laughs> Vinny boy is making his way up quickly with the King's Palace. Scouted immediately by Avalé. In fact, he might even be able to harass this tiny bit delayed by a couple of seconds, but it's the information value that is so massive here for Avalé and he has to be happy with the timing he sees from Vinch, because if you look at his resources, he's not far away himself. He's going to be a solid minute or so behind, but he's going to be more than happy with that, because he already has three TCs set up and working. Mm -hmm. And Avalé, of course, when he starts his own tech up, he's going to keep amassing an army, and it might be his intent is just to go to Horseman. I expect a transition, though. Maybe we see some Spearmen coming out, just because the likelihood is Vinchester wants to go into Knights. Could just be he goes for, like, a Death Blob type configuration, right? If you build mass spears, arches, this type of thing, yes, you're up against Lombos and the English, but you're the Bassers, so you can build Maganels on the way to the enemy base. Indeed, you cannot. For the time being, it's only a couple of Spearmen being added here by Vinch, not a single stable coming up, so he's gonna have a low mobility army. Whereas on the other side, we've already seen a stable for Avalay. He's gonna have the mobility advantage over here, and this could be a vulnerability for Winchester. His base is still wide open, once those knights start making an appearance, Winchester's base has got to be more than exposed for raids. And the raids is the key part, right? The reason why most players just go mass cavalry on this type of map is how do you how do you be safe, Lydical? Uh, do, maybe you become corner boy. Maybe you build your base in the corner and you wall it off because otherwise I don't <laughs> see an easy way that you're going to wall in the mid game. 
Yeah, and Winchester sees the horseman coming in here, and he already sees the problem he's about to face. He's struggling to catch up with those. Spearmen, if they ever get a chance to fight them, sure thing, they will win, but they will never be given an opportunity to engage those horsemen. Those will just keep running circles around the base of Winchester. Exactly. Winchester should mainly just have these spears to keep his opponent out, and that's it. But... It's not going to be it for Avali. Avali is prepping for what comes next. Castle is almost complete, and with it, there's going to be a slew of men at arms coming out. He's also going into the Camel Archers, a respectable solution here. And you have to remember that, sure, this unit is meant to be uh, or a debuffer as well as a counter spears, but Camels, especially from Castle Age, have pretty damn good base damage. They are really good. In fact, because of that high range damage, their armor piercing power is also pretty remarkable. So for a unit that's not meant to hard counter armored units, they do pretty well, and they're also pretty tanky unit, they do debuff enemy cavalry, so you limit the options of your opponent when it comes to unit selection. You also have a pretty tanky unit that can still pierce armor pretty well. Yeah, I, I think the, the kind of nutty part is if you look at the configuration that Vinches has gone for, and he's at least fixing it now by adding a Lombos, but before that, men at arms and spears, if you were to just mass camel archers as Avali, you've countered what Vinchester has built entirely. Now, the Lombos is a nice touch, but here's the problem. Because Avali's building men at arms as well, he can build Maganels on the go. So these Lombos are not going to be a safe solution for Vinchester. And that's part of the reason why we're going to see some crossbows possibly even from Avali. In fact, he's got a couple queued up already. That's the reason why he's confident adding men at arms of his own. He can't win the war with men at arms against the superior English ones. But he doesn't even want to. He just needs something in front of the crossbows and should Winchester choose to go with the longbows to deal with the crossbows, he's just going to start adding mangonels on the battlefield. And that's where Winchester is going to have to realize that this is a difficult matchup because he doesn't really have a unit composition that's suitable to beat the Abbasids with. I mean, it's interesting to say that, like, you know, he needs the crossbows. Arguably, he could be without the crossbows and just go for Camelots. I, I think Camelots is still a solid solution, and then you build one team mangonels. But to explain the thought process here, what is it we said? about this map. What did we say is an issue? It's accessing food, right? There's not that much food, which means Avali is astutely aware he's going to need to transition farms. So he can't afford camel arches, which cost 180 food each. Compare that to crossbows at 80 food each. It's a logical decision, right? It just gets you a lot more bang for buck. Yeah, for sure it is. They also don't cost wood. So you can spend all yep. the wood you're getting on the farm transition, whereas for crossbows, well, as you said, there is going to be no wood cost associated with them, unlike the camel archers. So there's a lot of ingredients to this, in a way. He is going to be able to field a decent army, and he's also going to be able to shield himself while doing a farm transition. But at the end of the day, what probably matters for him the most is that he's up by 17 eco, and Winchester is going to have limited options to cut into that, because right now Winchester's army is just unable to do significant damage over here. A couple of men at arms might try to harass those villagers, but... That doesn't look super intimidating, KP. Uh, the, the other thing that's an issue with me is Winchester has shown no propensity towards raiding. If you look north side, this area is scouted. He sent two men at arms. He scouted this out. He sent two MAA up. That's going to idle eco, but it's not going to kill it. Imagine these were two knights heading out to that deer stack. All villagers are dead. Imagine there's two knights heading over here. Several villagers are dead. Instead, all he can do is shut them out temporarily. But at the end of the day, Avali is still going to have that eco lead. And that's the big thing. Oop. Man at arms just ignoring that one villager out there. And you can see that Winchester is doing the right things. He's trying to harass those exposed food spots. Problem is, they doesn't have the mobility to catch those villagers with. And while he's doing that, he doesn't really have a standing army back at home to defend against now what will be two mangonels. Yeah, it's a rough one now because these MAA, they're going to start to get counted out. Enough time to be bought to do that. The resources will be reacquired in the meantime. Your resources are being shut down. That's a lot of board farms that just can't work anymore. And they're easy targets. Love that from Avali. He targets the mill in the center to maximize his damage spread and take out farms in mass. And that's a snowball factor here. We talked about the fact that food could be an issue for Avali, but losing all those farms could easily mean that the Winchester could be the one being starved out. And you see, now he's also being stormed by men in arms when most of his army oh, no. is just actually longbows. C Twitter shuttle's not even complete. He'll at least get a defensive keep up. That's going to slow Avali down in his tracks. And remember that he cannot build siege of the required type here in the field. Not being able to build trebuchets on the front line means Avali might be slow to get rid of this keep. But at the same time, what is this keep protecting, Lydical? It's Nothing. There's a lot of northern base for Winchester to uh, worry about. 
It gets worse than that. The army of Winchester just evaporated in the blink of an eye. He charged into the men at arms of Avalie, got wrecked by the mangrel and crossbow fire. All his men at arms are gone, and his longbows also took a big hit from those mangonels. And look at that. Switch up now coming in. Two battering grams. It is 28 army for Vinch, as opposed to 67 from Avalie. Even if he gets Network of Citadels, it feels like a long shot for him to be able to fight this. I actually love that detail from Avalie. He's like, well, I'm not going to wait to build trebuchets. No, we're, we're ending this now. Rams is a pristine choice. Because as he just said, the men at arms can't do anything. Vinch's is only unit that can potentially skirt the fight and attack, maybe somewhat freely, is the Lombos. Lombos don't really bother these Rams. And also, <laughs> they're always at threat from the Maganels behind them. Yeah, a single Springhold is now out for Vinches. Your problem is the time factor. He's only got that keep to build Springholds with, and he's not even going to have the population space to do so. He's losing the houses, and now he can't even add more Springholds. Yeah, Springhold. The old Springhold that could is going to try to slow this down, but keep in mind, that just revealed the critical detail to Avali. Avali now is fixing his gold. He had gaps in it, but I think he's moved to a new gold vein. Once he's done that, expect three or four Springles set up, and all of a sudden, Vinchester has no way of combating this at range. Which, if you're the English and you can't win at range, what do you win at? Yeah, it's, it's difficult, right? You are going to have the Network of Castles, possibly the Network of Citadels boost, so you won't need that many of those Springles. But still, this is a difficult hold, especially because, as you said, that one keep is protecting the southern part of Winchester's base, but he still remains exposed to the north, and that's a pretty juicy target for Avalie. And Winchester can't really afford to lose more eco. He's already down by 30, and soon more villagers will follow the previous ones to the grave. Why do you have to tell him what he can't can't do? He can't can't do. You can't lose more eco? Yeah, here he is, losing <laughs> more of them, trying to build up the defenses. He's even going to rush it up faster, but in the meantime, the camels are having a field day. I thought... I thought cavals were, were herbivores, but they look very happy devouring humans. <laughs> I, I think it's the guys that are sitting on top of those camels, KP. I don't think it's the camels' own choice to kill those villagers rather than the guys on top. They did a terrific what? job with that. How, how, how do you convince the camels to go then? <laughs> True. I, I, it's just a theory. Like, you know, I just... Maybe they're, they're more more stick than carrot, but I'd like to think that, you know, you got to incentivize the camels to work instead of uh, hurt them. Oh, boy. This is going to hurt, actually. He's going for Imp Age. Look yeah. at what Avali has done. Uh -huh. He's masked. Yeah, he's, he's masked. He's ready to ball. Very reminiscent of the previous game. Same thing. Winchester is trying to get an advantage by superior technology. The problem is that the moment he reaches Imperial, Avali is going to go, and... Avali is not that much behind if you look at his resources. Sure thing, he's going to be delayed because the opposites can't accelerate their age up. But he's up to 200 population. He can spend all his resources on aging while also putting a lot of pressure on Winchester's base before Winchester gets his imp upgrades. Yes, sir. We have to remember that Winchester, you know, hasn't got much access to wood, at least long lasting lines, right? One of his big fat patches has been blocked out indefinitely. And now the marching begins. Avali coming in with the 25 minute arms. Not to mention the crossbow to back him up. Maganels aren't nearby. Tech up has begun for Avali, and he's also prepping the military academy, so knows he might lose this army and wants to be able to insta-replace it. Camel Arch, in the meantime, have still been a fawn in Winchester's side, wasting his time and wasting his economy. Although Avali isn't looking to end the game right now, he realizes that he has applied enough pressure that he can catch up in terms of tech and then look to move in. Yeah. And kind of throwing away the rams over here. He needs more population space for just standing army. Realizing that he could easily overrun his opponent over here. Vinch has network of citadels and he's up to Imperial. So clock is ticking to a certain extent for Avali. But he feels confident with this one. Will eventually take down the expansion DC here on the front. I love that he's finally going. I think he should be waiting as long as he was. He's just giving an opportunity for Vinch to get back in the game. Maganel's going to start to smash. Need to prioritize the Lombos on the left side here because they are easy pickings condensed in the middle of the, uh, the houses. But what? What, the do? <laughs> what is that attack? Okay. Yeah, Vinchest is getting a redeeming factor here. Lombos living a lot longer than they should. The house goes down, which frees them to open fire in a spread formation. And it looks like Avali did not get as good a fight as he should have here in the end. Lombos actually might save him. Yeah, he has had a subpar fight over here. Network of Citadels helping out for Vinch, but also the fact that the Manganols, they were almost a non-factor over here, really not doing anything to those longbows. In the end, this is still okay for Evelie, though. 
He managed to destroy Vinci's army. He's up to Imperial himself with a solid population lead of 70. I answer that. So you telling me two Baganels each killing a man at arms isn't worth it? <laughs> right, I refund, wouldn't call refund. it worth it, but it's something, right? <laughs> it's pretty much nothing. <laughs> That's the problem there. Luckily yep. for Avli, he's at least set up a proxy base, and of course he does have Military Academy. Meanwhile, Vinchester, if you want to know how hard this game is, imagine you're an English player, you've hit Imperial Age, and you don't have a need for more housing than 120 pop cap. Yeah, that's just very sad. Army number is also not looking very shiny for him. Trying a forward keep over here in the middle, already being trapped though. This could be a nice way to snipe the trebuchet though. Uh, it's like... There's no way nice he's getting move. in there and he realizes it has to back away. I mean, just look how baby level his military is and look how quickly Avali is escalating again. Also, keep in mind, Avali took that fight without any tech upgrades. He's going to have double quantity and the quality next time. Especially seeing as he's switching over to Cabal Arches, which, as we know, are like nuclear weapons in the late game. That's what I love about Avali's position over here. He's not just gaining ground over here, he's also securing it. Something that often gets overlooked by players. But when you have the amount of stone he has, sure thing, turn that into Bombard Towers, and even if Winchester can take one or two good fights, he still needs to break through the middle and look at the stone walls coming up. Avali means Wait, business. Really? He just wants to have no opportunity for Winchester to get any kind of counterattack going. Whoops. The timing on this, oh no, no, no. See, in Lyrical, it's not just about the counter attack, it's actually about resource secure for late game. The gold over here is important for both players, and he's gonna scout it out, and he's got enough camel arches, and this time Avali will not target the keep, he'll only target the villagers. He's gonna pip it at the post. Just oh. so close, <laughs> about 95% done, but yet yeah, 5% is what matters here. And the wildlife even helped Winchester because those camels were slowed down as they were targeting down some wolves. Winchester still unable to get that keep up there and it's just more and more pain for him. Confined into his base, now getting pushed down to 128 population. This feels like an impossible task for Winch. Uh, all I'm learning very quickly is that Age of Empires 2 players have uh, an interesting history with keeps they just can't seem to overcome. Because that right there, I mean, that's a critical detail missing out on that gold. Look at Vinny's income. Gold looks like it should be good at a thousand, but then remember what he's trying to build here. He wants knights, he wants hand cannoneers. This gold meant the world to him, and it was the only gold that he really had access to long term. He has at least got one in reserve in the back corner, but it's half of what he wanted. And that's why he doubles down. He would look to get it up anyway. But the Camel Arch is going to easily clean up all the villagers before you clean up them. Yeah, and the problem is that you got delayed going into that gold and you desperately need that gold right now for Winchester. He needs to field more army. He's down by a solid 20. The bigger problem is that the Mangonel... Oh, it's Hello? gonna wipe out most of the crossbows. No spring oh on the field God. to deal with them. It's the next level strategy from Avali. He intentionally misused the Mangonel, so Winchester would never move his people away. It's genius, Lydical. We just didn't <laughs> understand the brain that is Avali's. Because now Vinchester doesn't even micro away from them anymore. What a genius. Uh, it's not just the brain, it's the muscle as well, as he is now pounding his way into the base of Vinchester here with the horseman. Complete switch to elite horseman already. No sign of Vinchester being able to deal with that. He's trying a desperate switch into hand cannoneers, but those take too much time to train. And his population is just dropping more and more down to 100 against a fully pop-capped Avalay, who is now about to start sieging the starting TC. Honestly, at this point, he might have just been better off getting a, a different thing out of the, the Wingard Palace. Maybe going for some, some Gunner boys, but it won't matter either way. He's done here. GG gets called. Vinchester will not be the third player to make it to both Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 4. Only doubt can keep that dream alive now. Indeed. Decent showing here by Vinchester, but Avalay has shown that experience is going to prevail. These civilization matchups... Many of these, especially the first one, Abbasids versus Delhi, comes down to experience, and that experience was on the side of Evely in this one. Confident games in both um, maps, and he indeed, at the end, takes his own creation as well. Basin, he's the guy who created this map, will take the victory over here in Winchester. He can't be disappointed, he tried his best over here, but obviously, now he's going to fully focus all his attention to AoE 2 as he's qualified for Heidelberg land for AOE 2, but will fail to get a ticket for AOE 4 as well.
Yeah, of course. Vinny still has a potentially very big paycheck to look forward to, but he won't be able to get the double buckaroos. Instead, Avali will keep the dream alive. And folks, Avali, you know, he's been grinding at for more or less since release. Avali coming from uh, one of the less known age of games. Definitely a competent player, frequently featuring in the top 100. Hasn't really had an opportunity to make a deep run. Maybe this could be the beginning of something, but <laughs> the key detail, folks, is it's only the beginning. And I've looked at the brackets, and I can assure you that they are rough. It not... The, at one point, in fact, I think they, the brackets got reshuffled because at one point it was clearly a, there was a little bit of question marks around the, the lay of the land because some of the front runners were likely to be eliminated in the first two rounds, clearly, because they were up against each other. Even with those changes, though, there's just so many names to think about here. You know, Magic, Donati, um, we've got Keo in there as well. There's an absurd amount of players that can make it, but I'm looking forward to seeing who can do it. Um, looks like next up, we are going to be checking in on Simtom and Core, where I don't think anyone has taken the lead yet, so that'll be exciting. And we should get in that in a sec. But yeah, you know, pull one out for Vinny Boy, guys. He couldn't he couldn't just prove AE2 dominance here. I am happy to see Ali keep it alive though, man. This is a this is a guy who hasn't really been able to get that deep run, prove himself. Maybe this is finally the time. There are a few Germans in contention that can make it, right? Like, it's not just Avali. We've also got to consider the Zertan. There's Core, who we're going to check in next against Sim Tom, and Crackity as well. Could the home country of Heidelberg get some representation?